Hi, my name is Jennifer. Welcome back to my channel and welcome to the Stand With Trans Kids book tag. So this tag was created by the wonderful Leo Bancroft. I don't think I've been uh, tagged in this tag directly, but I knew as soon as I saw Leo's original video that it was a tag that I absolutely wanted to do. Um, so we're just going to get into it. Question one is tag some fabulous friends who may also want to do this tag and stand with trans kids. I'm going to tag a couple of people who I don't think I have seen do this tag yet. I'm going to tag Mo from Anna Mo Shoshin and I'm also going to tag Rene Pierre who is a booktuber who I have only very recently discovered um, but who I think is great. So if you fancy doing this tag feel free. Question two is tell us about some books on your TBR pile featuring a trans non-binary character or non-fiction about trans non-binary stuff. So first off, in terms of fiction, I have Felix Ever After by Casey in the Calendar, which is a YA novel about a, uh, a young black trans boy. Um, I'm hoping to get to this one quite soon. Also, in terms of fiction, I uh, want to read The Seep, which is by Charna Porter, which I think is like sci-fi fantasy speculative fiction featuring a trans character. I also want to read The Deep by Rivers Solomon. Again, I think that is also sci-fi fantasy speculative. Um, I have read Rivers Solomon before and I'll come to one of their books in the next question. Um, and then in terms of non-fiction, I want to read The Transgender Issue by Sean Fay. I want to read What the Tea by Juno Dawson. I'll mention Juno um, again in the next question. I want to read Trans Britain, um, which is a collection edited by Christine Burns. And just this morning I was watching a video from Booking with Deborah and she mentioned a book called Trans Like Me by C.N. Lester, which I have also added to my TBR. Question three is recommend a favourite book, show, movie featuring a trans non-binary character. So I'm going to stick with books because it's what I know. Um, so first of all, I'm going to mention uh, A Quakey and Mezzy. So my, probably my favourite book that I read last year is The Death of Vivek OG. Um, also from A Quakey and Mezzy, I have read and enjoyed Freshwater. Also Pet, which is a YA novel um, about a young trans girl. Um, this prequel to Pet has recently come out called Bitter, but I haven't read this one yet. Um, some other fiction that I've read and really enjoyed, Detransition Baby by Tori Peters, I read earlier this year. It's probably one of my favourite books of the year so far. The Passing Playbook by Isaac Fitzsimmons, which is a, a YA novel about a young trans boy. Um, this is How It Always Is by Laurie Frankel, which is a novel about a young trans girl. Um, Laurie Frankel has a child who is trans, so speaks from that experience. An Ordinary Wonder by Buki Papillon, which is a book that I read fairly recently, which is about um, an, uh, a sort of a pre-teen, pre teen, um, intersex Nigerian who is raised as a boy but knows from a very young age that they are a girl. There is Sorrowland by Rivers Solomon. I think I read that last year. I thought it was brilliant. It looks at themes of gender, sexuality, race. Brilliant. Um, I want to mention a historical crime series. The first book in the series is called The House on Half Moon Street. It's by Alex Reeve. Um, and that is set in Victorian London. And the main character is a trans man. Um, and there are three books in that series out so far. The first book, as I've said, The House on Half Moon Street, I absolutely loved. And I've enjoyed books two and three as well. Book four comes out in early July. So I am first in the queue. The library for that one and then in terms of non-fiction I wanted to mention the gender games by Juno Dawson which I read a couple of years ago and thought was great Juno Dawson um, writes mainly YA um, her first adult novel has either just come out or is about to come out um, and she writes non-fiction as well so those are some books I would highly recommend. Question four is everyone has their own journey and no one demographic is a monolith. 
recommend a book with a journey, however you define that. So I thought I would recommend Loveless by Alice Oseman, which is a book that I read, I think, last month. Um, and it's a YA novel. Um, and the main character is has just uh, started at university and it's about her journey in understanding her own identity in terms of her sexuality. Um, and she uh, comes to identify as asexual and aromantic. Um, so I thought her journey in coming to understand her own identity was really, really interesting to read about. It's, I didn't know that much about asexuality before reading that book, so I really learned a lot from it as well, and I would highly recommend it. I want to read more by Alice Oseman as well. Um, question five is none of us knows everything, even about our own identities, especially since we're not a monolith and all have our own journey. What is a book that taught you something either about yourself or the world around you? So I'm going to mention um, two books, one non-fiction and one fiction, which both sort of taught me uh, things are on the same theme. So the non-fiction is My Name Is Why by Lem Cisse, which is a book that I listened to on audio, I think right at the start of last year. It's narrated by Lem himself and is very, very good. It's about Lem's experience growing up in care in Britain. Uh, Lem is a black man, so as well, race plays a part in, in that experience. Um, and I thought that was wonderful and I learned a lot from it. It's quite a difficult read in many ways as well, but really important. And then from a fiction point of view, Careless by Kirsty Capes, which I read a couple of months ago because it was long listed for this year's Women's Prize for Fiction. Um, and it's about a young girl called Bess who grows up in care and it's about her experience. It's set in the 90s in Britain. Um, and again, I learned a lot from it. Very difficult to read in parts, but again, a really very important book. Question six, when things are hard in the world or in our lives, sometimes there are things we can do to help centre and refocus ourselves, to bring joy, to keep us going, to keep us living, resisting, being our authentic, authentically amazing selves. What are things you do to centre yourself or find joy? So I think the most important thing that I do to uh, maintain my general well-being is I go to uh, like fitness classes at the gym um i don't use the gym itself and i never have done but i go to classes so i do tai chi and i also do sort of dance fitness classes like zumba i do six classes a week in total because i like to make the most of my gym membership so i go there four evenings a week after work um, and it is absolutely the thing i do that helps me to stay well the most i'm sure it's doing good for me physically but in terms of my mental and emotional well-being um, it's absolutely the thing that helps to keep me well. Um, I get different things from the different classes. So from Tai Chi, I find it very grounding. Um, it helps me to focus. Um, and then from the sort of Zumba dance point of view, it's just very joyful. It's a great bunch of people and we have a lot of fun. Um, so yeah. Question seven is what's your walk on music or your feel at home and your body music? Now, I struggle with this question because I'm not entirely sure that I have walk on music. Um, but if I did, I think it would probably be some form of like cheesy pop music uh, from like the 90s, probably like a boy band, probably. Um, question eight is finding mentors, people of wisdom or heroes can be another way to help us navigate life. Who are some of your mentors? Can you share something that they taught you or inspired you to learn more about? This is another question that I kind of struggled with. I mean, I've not really had formal mentors as such. I guess just friends and family, honestly, um, who, you know, have supported me throughout life and helped me through stuff. And um, yeah, I think that would be my answer, friends and family. Um, question nine, who are some out trans or non-binary booktubers, Instagrammers, authors, actors, etc. who you'd like to shout out? Um, so booktube wise, obviously Leo Bancroft. Um, I love Leo's videos. I just find him so positive and his videos are so uplifting. Um, really, really wonderful. And as well, he does trapeze. He is a trapeze artist which I think we can all agree is fabulous. Um, and I also wanted to mention Willow from Books and Bow, whose content I really enjoy. Willow reads a lot of uh, translated fiction, particularly um, 
East Asian fiction, a lot of queer fiction, gothic fiction, and they have also uh, done some videos and spoken about their own um, sort of uh, gender identity journey as well, which is great. Question 10 is what are some organisations you'd like to shout out for supporting trans kids or trans folks? So the main one that I know about in the UK is Mermaids, um, who is uh, who are a charity. They support transgender, non-binary and gender diverse children, young people and their families. And I will link their website down below. So thank you so much for watching. Please do, um, if you've not done this tag yet, and you'd like to please do and let me know and i'll come and watch it because i think this is something that we should all um talk about in terms of highlighting books by trans authors featuring trans characters and in supporting trans youth in particular so thank you so much for watching and i'll speak to you again very soon bye